I am here with Gérard Bertrand, winemaker and now author of a new book. Thank you so much for being here with me. It is really my pleasure to share with you my experience from the south of France. Thank you. So today we're going to talk about biodynamic wines, which has exploded in popularity in recent years. And I think to begin, could you explain even just what biodynamic wine is for those who are unfamiliar? Yes. I think to to explain, we need to make the difference between organic and right. biodynamic. Mm -hmm. Because organic, it's a methodology, mm -hmm. and biodynamic, it's a philosophy. That is to say, you go further with the biodynamic principle. And uh, the biodynamic principle has been created by Rudolf Steiner, uh, who was Austrian, and in 1924, he has written a book called uh, The Lessons for Agriculture, and he explained how the stars, the moon, and the sun influence the, the plants and the vines through the silicon in the, in the subsoil and through the calcium carbonate in the soil. And he also explained the strong influence of the moon during the, the grow vegetative cycle. And so obviously, biodynamic wines go across grapes, across regions. You know, you're in the south of France, but there's biodynamic wines now being made in wine areas all over the world. What do you think differentiates wines and brings them together when they're in the biodynamic category? The vineyard is more healthy. Second, because we don't use any pesticide, any chemical product. Third, because the wines, they have more freshness, more minerality, more complexity, and then because the potential of aging of the wine is much more important. Mm. And how have you seen that biodynamic practices grow? Because obviously, you know, you mentioned that it was first written about in the 1920s, but it's really taken off in the last number of years. Why do you think that there's been this huge increase in biodynamic wines? Because, you know, in the, in the first part of the, of the 20th centuries, people didn't use any chemical products and they didn't make any biodynamic uh, agriculture but everything was organic at this time. Right, no other option. And of course between 1950 to 2000 people use more and more uh, uh, chemical products, pesticides, etc. And it was a concern because of course we realized that the soil and the subsoil give and deliver the taste of the terroir right. and the terroir this is something very important in the wine and especially in France mm -hmm. because we have a beautiful diversity of terroir and with the biodynamic principle we, you reinforce the taste of the terroir because the roots of the vine are going deeper and of course this is a key because when you when you taste a wine coming from a limestone terroir or from clay the taste is different right. and of course when you drink wine it's a combination between the taste of the grape variety mm -hmm. and the taste of the terroir both mm -hmm. and we need to find the perfect balance and you really use the practice across quite a number of wines so tell me a little bit about the wines that you're producing yes you know we start uh, with a plot of 10 acres in 2002 the vines were more healthy and the wine was more uh, mineral, more elegant, etc. And I have decided to convert all the estate, Sigalus estate, this one, mm -hmm. to the biodynamic principle in 2002. And as the success was spectacular because the acidity was more important, the freshness was there, the potential of aging was fantastic, and something we call the vibrancy. And now we have converted eight estates to the biodynamic agriculture and we are the leader in the world. We have more than 1,000 acres uh, in, uh, where we work in the, with the biodynamic uh, principle. And how does it affect the consumer and where can they find biodynamic wines? Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, maybe sometimes it's a little bit more expensive, but I would say that for biodynamic wines, you can find very good wine between uh, $25 to, to $100, but $25 for a biodynamic wine is not expensive. Mm. And uh, of course, uh, 
for us it's a problem of uh, of uh, will to deliver for our children mm. a better planet. Do you think we'll see an increase? Or yes. will it really move more organic as opposed to biodynamic? You know, organic is a first step. Mm. This is already a very good change. And we have more and more organic wine growers. We have also partnership with a lot of wine growers of uh, concerned by the organic agriculture. And some of them, when they understand why they change from the conventional agriculture to the organic agriculture, they want to go further and they want to be to take care about the cycle of the moon because we can explain what's happened with the moon. And as my father said, wine is 1001 detail yeah. and we need to respect all of them. Which varietal would you say is a good place to begin? Oh, you know, I think uh, I, see, I love blends. Mm. Red blends is fantastic. And of course, we do a lot of blends coming from Syrah, Grenache, Mourvedre, GSM blend. And for white, we have a Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc. But today also with the Rosé, we have fantastic Rosé with Chateau La Sauvageonne or Côte des Roses. We have fantastic Rosé. And uh, of course, Rosé become more and more popular in right. the US. Right. We're, we're catching on to the French way of life. You know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Gerard, for teaching us about biodynamic wines. And obviously, if you'd like to know more, you can pick up Gerard's new book, Wine, Moon and Stars. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Such a pleasure.